Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Hope everybody is safe. Everybody is secure. Hope your families are safe. Welcome. Welcome, welcome. I have a lot to uh, discuss and to share and uh, to interpret, to translate, and to expound upon. I need your attention, uh, particularly those of you who live in the state of Georgia, as that you will share this as quickly as you possibly can. I want you to tag every person you know who lives in the state of Georgia. A lot of people are going to be silent, but I can't hold my peace. Soon as uh, we get to a thousand, uh, I'll begin. All right, we're at 956, 991, 1000. Thank you so very much. Uh, I'm appreciative of the privilege uh, to be able to share and to come into your homes and uh, you affording me the space. Uh, to think out loud. Uh, I'm grateful to uh, have this opportunity and uh, disheartened that uh, what I have to say is needed to say uh, in such a time as this. Um, but ask that you would uh, please give me your attention uh, because uh, what we're dealing with is critical to this hour and critical to our community. Uh, earlier this afternoon, uh, Governor Jack Kemp uh, made a, a bold press conference that was derelict of responsibility, that was absent of moral integrity, uh, that was void of any wisdom. The governor of the state of Georgia I uh, got on uh, all of the press outlets in the state of Georgia and made the bold pronouncement uh, that he is uh, laxing the restrictive order uh, so that uh, people can go and uh, come as they please. All of us are keenly aware that we are in a state of crisis and that uh, our community has become the lead casualties, uh, the hotbed uh, for those who are contracting COVID-19 has hit in a disproportionate way African-American households. The lead epicenter of those who have contracted uh, COVID-19 are uh, those who are in uh, prisons, who are incarcerated, who are now serving, by the luck of the draw, a death sentence for misdemeanor offenses. So people who cannot afford bail or an attorney are now being strapped in the ventilators without any aid or any assistance. Governor Kemp uh, said that he was uh, rolling back his stay home order and in that uh, rolling back, he was opening up beauty salons, barbershops, tattoo parlors, nail salons, all of which draw the African-American community. It should not fall faint on us that just this week, African-Americans received their stimulus check. They received their stimulus check on Monday, and now they're opening up shopping on Friday. They understand diabolically that African-Americans are prone to do spending. When it is that uh, in uh, the Asian community, every dollar circulates for 30 days. In the Jewish community, circulates for 20 days. In the Caucasian community, 
the dollar circulates 17 days. In the Hispanic community, the dollar circulates for six days. And in the African-American community, it only stays in our possession for six hours before we hand our money over to proprietors in another community. Mm. And so to stimulate the income, they got to make Negroes spend money. And they're banking on us not spending it with ourselves. I said to uh, Dr. George Frazier, repeating a conversation I had with uh, Marcus Benjamin, that within the last week, between April 15th to April 30th, 30 million African Americans have received a stimulus check. From April 15th to April 30th, 30 million African Americans received a stimulus check at its base of $1,200. That's not even including if you get an additional 500 per child. What would happen between now and the end of April of that $1,200 that you spent 200 with a black owned business. You received 1,200 in the stimulus package. If you spent 200 within uh, African American businesses that would circulate for us over $20 million within three weeks. The reality friends is that the overwhelming majority of black businesses did not receive a small business loan. The overwhelming majority of our black businesses are on life support right now, while it is that Ruth Chris and Shake Shack received the money that was earmarked for small businesses. This is an economic revolution that is about to take place. The stock market crash of October 19, 1929, opened up a blank canvas for people like Robert, Rock, Rockefeller and Rothschild to become billionaires of the highest order. It has even out the playing field. Governor Jack Kemp, who already robbed the black community of a black governor who right now should be Stacey Abrams, but because they railroaded the system, he is now doing a second strike by leaving us to the slaughter. Bernice King, who is now the helm of the King Center, said in a video this afternoon that she is thinking about stepping down from the COVID-19 task force because she is on the committee and the governor didn't even respect her enough to tell him, to tell her that he was going to make this announcement. My mayor, Keisha Lance Bottoms, announced on CNN that she's on the COVID-19 committee and still received absolutely no heads up that he was laxing what was taking place. The church that I am pleased and privileged to pastor New Birth Missionary Baptist Church in Stonecrest, Georgia, uh, in Decatur, Georgia, has absolutely uh, minimal testing facilities for people in our community. And it is overwhelmingly African American. Georgia presently is 12th in the nation. I need you to hear me well, hear me clearly. Georgia is 12th in the nation for COVID-19 deaths. So why it is that this governor would roll back uh, to open up uh, for people to go back into gym pop, knowing that we don't have the gloves, don't have the surgical mask, we don't have a cure, and we don't have a remedy, something is absolutely wrong. Not only are we 12th uh, in the nation, uh, but 23% of all of those who are tested in Georgia, 23% of those who are tested in Georgia test positive. 
Now, with that data being true, that makes Georgia fifth in the nation. Fifth in the nation of those who have COVID-19. Uh, black and brown people, African Americans, Latino community, make up 55% of those who work in the service market in Georgia. What is the service market? Those who work in retail, those who work in grocery, those who work in hospitality. And so it's easy for them to be able to sleep at night under the false thought that those who will be impacted at the highest rate and die at the quickest rate would be African Americans. I wonder and I shudder to think what would be the thought if in fact those who would be stricken by COVID-19 were overwhelmingly minority rural white farmers. Mm. Would in fact the same precedent take place? I say not. I am calling on uh, Governor Kemp to immediately reverse and retract his order that is supposed to start on Friday. What it is that he is doing is launching a no uncertain terms an assault on the minority community in Georgia. I am afraid and I am frightened that this is going to set an immoral precedent for other wayward governors across the South who believe that if he can do it, then it is in fact the new standard for death to happen to the black community. I stand with countless numbers of other clergy who have resolved within our heart, our spirit, our mind, and our ethical compass that we cannot resume church as normal because nothing is normal. I stand tonight grateful for the brotherhood, uh, Pastor Craig Oliver, Pastor Raphael Warnock, Pastor E. Dewey Smith, Pastor William Murphy, Pastor Cynthia Hale, Pastor William Flippin, and Bishop Reginald Jackson, and my pastor, Bishop William Watley, who in fact stand in defiance, reminding Governor Kemp that uh, Georgia is the epicenter and the birthplace of resistance against that which is immoral. That everything that happened in the civil rights era was hewn out of a leader that was birthed out of the red clay hills of Georgia who understood that every time a legislator does something that is immoral and illegal, it should not be followed. New birth will not be holding church because we understand that life is valuable and we cannot in fact go down this rabbit hole of a slippery slope. Where are the testing kits? And if we're gonna deal with testing kits, we've gotta deal with the inequity of health care that is provided to black and brown people in this state. We keep hearing the flag being raised about pre-existing conditions. Pre-existing conditions like hypertension, obesity, uh, high blood pressure, and things of that magnitude and heart disease is because we have not addressed the fact that many people in our community are living in food deserts. Many people in our community do not have access to affordable health care. Many people in our community only end up seeing a doctor when they come through an emergency room. And so Governor Kemp, if you have a decibel of moral integrity before Friday comes, I am pleading on your conscience, even when the evangelicals remain silent in this hour. I stand and cry loud and spare not that what it is that you are calling for is contrary to the will of God who declared openly, I came that you might have life and have it more abundantly. And so Governor Kemp, since you have time on your hands, I would challenge you in this hour that if in fact you're going to do some sweeping moves, make some sweeping moves so that all of these children in Georgia public schools 
who don't have access to Wi-Fi. All of the young people in Georgia schools who are now not having online education, but will be passed on to the next grade even when they have not taken the Georgia proficiency tests. You are training and preparing them for mass incarceration and to be flushed in the prison pipeline without any prospect for any gainful employment. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., who hails from this great city, said, and I quote, crime is the bride of poverty. Wherever it is that you see poverty, crime is close by. And so I am asking this governor that we would in fact intentionally uh, look for job creation, that there would be support for our teachers who have a heart for education, have a heart in investing in our young people and have a heart in making sure that the next generation is equipped and is prepared. Governor Kemp, I am asking you in the next 48 hours, you already have two amazing, conscientious, committed black sisters on your task force in Bernice King and in our mayor, Keisha Lance Bottoms. I ask that you would meet with both of them immediately because I trust that they speak for our community and for the, fair, for the welfare of our people. I pray for repentance over this governor and the legislators who support him, who believe that this is a good idea. Something is wrong with the moral fiber of our community when we put commerce over the value of human life. Yes, all of us got cabin fever 2.0. All of us are scratching to go outside but I don't want any of us rushing to a premature death and to an early funeral. We've come through too much to die at the hands of irresponsible legislators. We are the same people who survived the Middle Passage, who survived slavery, who survived Jim Crow, who survived all of the heinous crimes that have committed among, upon us. And we are going to survive Donald Trump. And I declare by God's grace, we will survive Governor Kemp's reckless decision. I pray that all of you who are here in the state of Georgia will please ignore Governor Kemp and his admonishment for you to go out. It is not safe. As that you will continuously wash your hands, as that you will please use your surgical mask and let me underscore for you how important and critical it is while you are in that you will please fill out your census. Only 50%, only 50% of those of you who live in DeKalb County have filled out your census report. You're able to do so with anonymity. Nobody can come after you, but it helps us in funding our district and our county I'm asking for elected officials who share same mind, thought, and consciousness to stand with me and other committed clergy to call this governor into accountability. State of Georgia, I'm praying for you and for our comrades around the country who are suffering this same inglorious plight from New York to Illinois to Michigan to Florida to Virginia to my own beloved DMV We've got to, in fact, echo the sentiment of the Negro spiritual. Walk together, children, and don't you get weary. There'll be a great camp meeting in the promised land. Let's stay safe. God bless you.